Welcome to Christ-Centered Community on Upper Caswell Lake. We are time together learning about God and His expectations of us. Be a mighty blessing to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son into the world that we might be in a relationship with you, that we might get to know you, and that we might bring you glory. May we each be receptive vessels to that which you want to bless us with this day from your written word. May the Holy Spirit use this message to help people come to the realization that with Jesus, they never have to walk alone. And may the Holy Spirit also use this message to help disciples of Christ recognize they are not walking alone. For as Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of of the age. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On March the 14th, 2016, Papa lost Mama, his wife of 67 years, to cancer. For 67 years, he was a we with her, after which he felt like an I once again. But was he? For he was a disciple of Christ, in Jesus' final words to his disciples, as recorded in Matthew 28, verse 20, were, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As such, in Christ he was still a we. He would never walk alone. In contrast with Adam and Eve, who heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God, for they had chosen to eat of the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is, their sin separated them from God, and they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. They still had each other for as long as they lived, but they no longer were able to walk with God. The question is, are you walking with Jesus, or have you chosen to walk alone? Our text for today might aid you in answering that question. With that in mind, let us consider our text for today, John 8, verses 21 through 30, whereby Jesus is still teaching in the temple, specifically in the court of women, and he is still being confronted by the Pharisees. In other words, he is just where we left him in last week's sermon in our walk through the gospel according to John sermon series. Again, he said to them, I am going away and you will search for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. Then the Jews said, is he going to kill himself? Is that what he means by saying, where I am going, you cannot come? He said to them, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. They said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, why do I speak to you at all? I have much to say about you and much to condemn. But the one who sent me is true, and I declare to the world that I have heard from him. They did not understand that he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own but I speak these things as the Father instructed me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what is pleasing to him. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. With respect to the question, are you walking with Jesus or have you chosen to walk alone? Our text for today provides three signs one is walking alone. Unbelief, without purpose, without pleasing. We'll begin our discussion with the first sign, unbelief. In verse 
21 of our text for today, Jesus states his premise or statement of fact that the Pharisees would die in their sin. Thus, where he was going, they could not go. Then in verses 23 through 24, he presents his arguments in support of his premise. Why? Because you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. That is, the Pharisees would die in their sin for an insurmountable barrier separated them. Unbelief. And the attitude of unbelief is not simply an unwillingness to accept a statement of fact. It is resistance to the revelation of God in Christ. Not only did they repudiate his claims, they completely rejected his person. That is, they didn't just reject his claim that they would die in their sins, they refused to have anything to do with him. They refused to acknowledge him, and they rejected him. In so doing, they rejected the truth revealed by God the Father in the person of his Son. They were so close-minded that they totally missed the fact that God was walking among them in the person of his Son. How about you? Are you going to die in your sins? For without Jesus, one will die in their sins. The story is told of a man walking in his neighborhood when he came face to face with death. Death was obviously shocked to see the man, but said nothing. The two simply passed in the street. But the more that the fellow thought about this strange meeting, the more frightened he became. So he went to a wise friend and asked what he should do. The friend told him that death had probably come to take him away the next morning. He had better flee. So the man headed to a distant city to elude death. He traveled treacherous streets, slickened by snow, roads rarely used at night because they wound through steep mountain passes. But he survived the terrible journey and congratulated himself on having escaped. As he watched the sunrise, however, death tapped him on the shoulder and said, I have come for you. What are you doing here? exclaimed the terrified man. I thought I saw you yesterday near my home. Yes, you did, said death. That was why I looked surprised, for I had been told to meet you today in this city. That is an obvious parable for how we cannot cheat death. It reminds me of the inscription on the tombstone. Pause, stranger, when you pass me by. As you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you will be. So prepare for death and follow me. Someone scratched into the weathered cement these two additional lines. To follow you, I'm not content until I know which way you went. Benjamin Franklin wrote a friend, everything appears to promise that it will last, but in this world, nothing is certain but death and taxes. Death cannot be avoided. The cryonics Institute in Michigan will freeze your body if you pay them enough. They advertise, when future medical technology allows, our member patients hope to be healed, rejuvenated, revived, and awakened to a greatly extended life in youthful good health, free from disease or the aging process. Such dreams are silly and foolish. Instead, the Bible in Hebrews 9 verse 27 tells us the truth. It is appointed for men to die once and after this comes judgment. Everyone dies and everyone faces judgment. Which way we go depends on whether we die in our sin or in the Lord. These are the only options. 
As stated in verse 24 of our text for today, belief in Jesus is the way to die without our sins and in the Lord. Belief in Jesus also provides the means to walk with the Lord and not walk alone. Which brings us to the second sign one is walking alone included in our text for today. That is, without purpose. In verse 26 of our text for today, Jesus said, He who sent me is true, and the things which I heard from him, these I speak to the world. In verse 28, Jesus said, I speak these things as the Father taught me. And in verse 29, Jesus said, For I always do the things that are pleasing to him. It is apparent from these verses that Jesus' life had purpose and methodology. He listened for his father's voice. He heard from his father, and he spoke that which he heard. He was expectant, he heard, and he obeyed. He had a purpose-driven life. And pleasing his father gave his life meaning. Such should also be the case for a disciple of Christ, that is, one who believes in Jesus and follows the teachings of Jesus Christ. Disciples of Christ, having been commissioned by Jesus, as recorded in Matthew 28, verse 19, to go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That is, disciples of Christ have been assigned a role to play in God's cosmic plan to redeem the world he loves. They are to listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit that dwells within them. And when they hear from the Holy Spirit, they are to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to do God's bidding. Purposefully acting and speaking in accordance with the directions of the Holy Spirit in God's timing, thereby bringing glory to God. Like Jesus, to be expectant, to hear, and to obey. As Jesus had an abiding relationship with his Father, and there was a oneness between Jesus and his Father, there should be an abiding relationship between a believer and Jesus, and a oneness between the believer and Jesus, That abiding relationship and oneness are made possible by the Holy Spirit that dwells within the believer and together bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. Such purpose is found in Jesus. How about you? Does your life have purpose? If not, purposefulness can be found in walking in tune with the Holy Spirit to do God's bidding. Which brings us to the third sign, one is walking alone, included in our text for today. That is, doing things not pleasing to God. In verse 28, Jesus said, I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. In verse 29, Jesus said, He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. Unlike Jesus, who did nothing on his own initiative and always did things that were pleasing to his father, thus was not left alone, Adam and Eve turned their heads towards the hiss of the snake and for the first time ignored God. Eve did not ask, God, what do you want? Adam did not suggest, let's consult the Creator. They acted as if they had no Heavenly Father. His will was ignored, and sin, with death on its coattails, entered the world. Sin sees the world with no God in it. Where we might think of sin as slip-ups or missteps, God viewed sin as a godless attitude that leads to godless actions. All of us have strayed away like sheep, acting on our own initiative. 
We have left God's path to follow our own. The sinful mind dismisses God. His counsel goes unconsulted. His opinion unsolicited. The lack of God-centeredness leading to self-centeredness. Sin separating us from God. And thus, we walk alone. But it is a wonderful day when we choose to respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and confess and repent of our sin and ask Jesus to be our Savior. That is to say, when we choose to place our faith in Him and not in ourselves or things of this world. And when we give up control of our lives to Him, doing nothing on our own initiative, but making Him the Lord of our lives. And this is even true, not only with individuals, but within the church, choosing to work with God in lieu of working for God, rather than reporting to God, working with God. Rather than checking in with Him and then leaving, we check in with Him and then follow, always being in the presence of God. Just like Jesus, always acting in line with His Father's perfect will, in His Father's perfect timing, on His Father's cosmic plan to redeem the world. As such, never walking alone anymore. Jesus never walked alone. He disclaimed originality for His message. He was conveying the truth of the one who sent Him, and He was carrying out His orders. His whole purpose was to please the Father. His utter devotion produced a purpose-filled life of complete holiness. Neither do we have to walk alone if we choose to put our faith in Jesus, if we choose to play the role assigned in God's plan to redeem the world He loves, and if we choose to be expected to listen and to obey the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit never acting on our own initiative, but cooperating with the Holy Spirit to do God's will in God's perfect timing, thereby bringing glory to God. So the questions I leave you with today to prayerfully consider during this coming week are, are you walking with Jesus or have you chosen to walk alone or only with the temporal human? As written in John Four, verse 16, Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. Thus, Jesus is the means by which we never have to walk alone. For His final words to His disciples of the first century are also applicable to us, His disciples of today. I am with you always, even to the end of of the age. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, like Jesus, may our whole purpose be to please you. May we not act on our own initiative without first turning to you and expectantly waiting on the voice of the Holy Spirit. And when we hear from the Holy Spirit, may we be obedient, cooperating with the Holy Spirit and doing your bidding. May our actions be such that they are always pleasing to you, for we long to always walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you can join us again next week for the next part of our Walk Through the Gospel According to John sermon series. When God calls you home, may Jesus greet you with, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you.